calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's mob time. Don't tune in, cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all? And welcome to the Blurred Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I'm your host, Foot, joined by my co-host, Ron. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you Disney princes and princesses are watching us on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn those bell bell notifications for future uploads, and leave a (laughs) comment and let us know what you thought about this episode. I'm not going to go too in-depth. I've been messing with y'all a little bit, but hey, engage with us. Tell us how you like these shorts. Keep the comments going. Talk to us, and we'll talk back. I feel like I got something in my teeth, but we ride. Probably some saliva. Or cavity. (laughs) <laughs> I guess we'll find. I guess we'll find out next time <laughs> at the dentist office. <laughs> we'll find out next time at the dentist office. But what's been going on, Ryan? Man, I am chilling. I have been rewatching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Thoroughly enjoying it. Um, keeping up with Tower of God, a few shows, and I've just been chilling, bro. Chilling. Yeah, we're going to definitely get into Tower of God and everything that we've been watching since the last episode. But um, I've been doing the same old, same old, chilling. The fall season is approaching. Um, Is the weather cooling down where you at? Because it's hot out here. It's getting down to the 80s. We ain't touched the 90s in a minute. It was 100 yesterday here. Woo! (laughs) <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> fall <laughs> yeah <laughs> where you at Woo. global warming is a serious issue guys and we, <laughs> we Look, it's a i think it's just texas i ain't even gonna lie to you i think it's just texas man the south yeah the yeah. south ain't no telling what everybody else looking like but um Welcome, everybody, to episode 48 of the Blurred Mob podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing all of the updates from D23. We're going to be discussing what we've been watching since the last episode. And we're going to be talking about the One Piece reboot by Wit Studios and uh, Netflix. So, a lot of good stuff coming today. We're going to start at the top with what have we been watching so you mentioned Full Metal, Alchemist Brotherhood, and Tower of God. What else have you been checking out, Ron? Um, Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest. We Fairy Tale fans are eating. The story has intensified. I'm not going to give y'all too many spoilers and because it is still really new, but we're getting more depth, a lot more ties into the history of dragons with Natsu's family and Iganil right now. Really good stuff. The action is good. The animation is good. If you never like Fairy Tales Friendship, um, power friendship um traditions and storylines you're not going to like it but for the mm-hmm. folks who like it you're going to love it it's good right now now i've really been enjoying how they've been animating uh 100 years quest and i the part that we're getting to now is um like i said before i've been reading a little bit of the manga but this is when the story really started to pick up for me like right oh, after yeah. this point so we're about to get we're about to get some good shit in these next couple of episodes um Spinning the block to Tower of God, I that is a I feel like that is the sleeper hit of the summer twenty twenty four anime season. Cause I was not I watched Tower of God because I forgot what episode I mentioned it on that I wanted to check it out and I checked it out that day and I watched like maybe close to the whole season that night. I was not expecting Same. Tower of God to be that good. And season two, they've bumped up the animation. So if you were a little bit hesitant to get in the Tower of God because of how they animated the first season, that animation in the second season is way better. And we're getting a bit more context on a couple things. What happened on uh, that last episode going into what they're dealing with now. But I'm with it. We still hate Rachel. Yeah, this is this is a hate Rachel fan club. F Rachel. Big Ryan don't like the cuss, but me, fuck Rachel. (laughs) Like, me and my homies hate Rachel. We do not like her, bro. We do not. We do not like Rachel. And if you've watched Tower of God season one, you know, you know. If you know, you know. But 
I highly recommend if you weren't watching anything for the summer 2024 anime season, please start Tower of God. Please start it because that season one, like like Foop said, you can bust it out in a couple of days. Like over the weekend, just mm-hmm. bust it out. If you need two weekends, go ahead. It is that good. Don't let the art style. Well, yeah, don't, I think don't, it's animation. Don't let that throw yeah. you off. Don't let the animation um hold you back. It's a really good story. Um, the first season is thirteen episodes. All of it is in dub. So if you're the type that when binging you like to watch it in dub, all of the episodes are in dub. So. And the dub was pretty good. The dub's yeah, not bad. Like I watched dubs it. Dubs have gotten dub. a lot better. A lot I would better. Have, I would agree. This was this was a good dub. So I I watched the whole thing in dub. Um, of course, with the new season being out, most of the episodes are in sub. I think they've been doubling back with the dub, like a couple mm-hmm. of days after sub comes out. But that is our that is our top recommendation for the summer twenty twenty four anime season. And. And I do want to get into it just a little bit. I did go back and watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. A lot of people have recommended it to me. My boy Sage, um, from um, from Beyond Beats and Pot and all that. Ace from Gurn Otaku Council and just my homeboy Tom. Shout out to him. They put me on a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And let me tell y'all, I see why it's the top anime on my anime list. I get it. I don't know what I was watching when I was younger. I don't know if I just couldn't get past them first 10 episodes because they are a little slow. But Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is a top tier shonen, bro. And I'm only on episode like 33 right now. It's, it anime- might be one of them animes that you have to spin. You ever watch something and, and then you have to spin the block too? And it's like, hmm. I think that's exactly what happened for me, bro. I did that for Demon Slayer and JJK, but Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is an old school anime. That's like right. the Hunter Hunter generation of anime. But, like, the animation still holds up. The plot is amazing. The setting is, like, this European post-industrial age, I don't know, time time zone. The concept of alchemy in that power system is very interesting and very balanced. The MC is interesting. The villains slash villain organization, I don't know what to call it, it really caught my interest. They base it around, like, the Seven Deadly Sins in terms of lust, greed, and envy and pride with some of the villains in there. Really good stuff, bro. I am enjoying it. I don't know if it's my favorite. I haven't finished it yet. Mm-hmm. But so far, I'm like halfway through. I think it's like 60-something episodes total. I love Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood right now. First time really watching it to this degree and feeling like this. Man. I, I've i been thinking about starting Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So I might check it out. I've been um, on the side. Because I like we said before, My Hero still continuing. Um fairy tale we're on the same page tarot god we're on the same page i've been keeping up with the suicide squad isekai and we talked about the first episode last episode but now i'm fully caught up to where we are now and it's it's pretty good nice i need to catch back up it's pretty good i like how they've been able to balance like the dc character elements with the fantasy world that they're in they're still keeping the essence of the suicide squad so you're gonna have like those questionable decisions villains being villains and of course the gore and the violence and everything that comes with the suicide squad and then it's just hilarious watching the people of the fantasy world uh react to the things that harley and deadshot do because like we're already accustomed but now we're watching a whole different group of people having to coexist with them and react to their decisions and how they form and bond as a team and things like that. It's been, it's been pretty good. Surprisingly, my dad has been watching it and he's not, even <laughs> he's not even a big anime fan, but he's been watching the suicide squad isekai and he's been enjoying it. Shout out to pop. Shout out to pops. I, it's, it's been some good content. When, when is suicide squad isekai ending? Cause I, I still have time to catch up. Right. Um, I don't know how many episodes it's supposed to be. Cause like no. I don't know if it's following like some regular anime. Like is it like two cores, so like twelve episodes each, or is it hitting that twenty four episode one season mark? If I could type. If I could type, I could get you an answer. But it's not filibuster. Filibuster. Make sure y'all check them links in the description. That's we have a so posting link to donate. You know we need more income to help us get more screens, better keyboard to track. Dang, um, so the, tra- it's it's done. And really? and I was just about to say I wanted to see I wanted to see the episode count, but I was about to say the way that they ended this last episode 
felt like a season finale. How many episodes is out so far? Ten. Okay, I think I watched three, so I need to I need to hurry up and finish that for a mob review. But the way that they um they had the way that they set up that last episode and the way that it ended gave um season finale. But I was like, I don't know. They might continue it. They might try to do like a twenty four episode season type thing. But no, Suicide Squad Isekai is done. So with that being said. I recommend it for those who are fans of the Suicide Squad, for those who are fans of anime. This is like, this is good shit. This is a good mix of DC and anime. It's a really fun watch. I like it both in sub and dub because at one point I did have to watch a couple episodes in dub, but it's legit. I didn't know. I didn't know it was over with yet. So yeah. Um, once Ryan gets caught up, we're definitely be putting out a mob review for that. Awesome, awesome. I'm gonna I've, catch up. I could catch up this week, honestly. I've been watching. I've also I've been taking my time with it. I've been watching some of the episodes of Batman: The Cape Crusader, which is the Batman uh, animated series that just dropped on Amazon Prime. It's cool. I haven't really found anything that sticks out to me. As right. far as like new animation, because I could go on a spiel on how much I love my adventures with Superman. And Superman's not even my favorite character in the DC universe. But the way that they've set up my adventures with Superman, I just love the way like the art style, the um the character design, the character development, like who they're including, the storylines that we're following. This Batman one is just not I see where the changes are but it's just not sticking out to me um if any of you guys who are listening or watching have been checking out the batman cape crusader let me know how you feel about it i'm a bit neutral on the situation like it's not sticking out to me like all 10 episodes of cape crusader are out but it just hasn't given me that push of oh i need to sit down and binge watch all 10 episodes in one season like i've been moving very slowly with this i don't know if it's just that these first couple episodes aren't really like getting to the nitty-gritty yet or if this batman series is not sticking out to me fair enough so we'll see (laughs) she said not a hard recommendation y'all let me know if y'all like it let me know if if y'all like it if i if i finish it i'll definitely put out a mob review on how i felt about it but i would say as far as Batman solo series go, animated series, I I don't know if this is the strongest one that's come out. Fair enough. So, you got any more recommendations, Ryan? Anything you want to tell? Oh, uh, not, uh, not at the moment. Everything, oh, Reincarnated as a Slime is pretty good. I can't really say if this season was that much more special. Remaru is building up his kingdom. Um, the fight with Hinata that was at what of multiple episodes ago, it was really good. But I think they're doing a full like twenty four episode season again this time around. So far, I like it. If you like Reincarnated as a Slime, if you didn't really appreciate season one and two, I doubt you would appreciate season three. But if you with it and you just been slowing down, I think it's gonna come into a close soon. I've been enjoying that. But it's nothing. It's not too much I can say about Reincarnated Slime. It's a nice turn your brain off and just enjoy it type of isekai. Yeah. Last thing, let's let's talk about let's give a a little bit of update on my hero academia. Um mm, oh yeah. It went on a break for a couple weeks. It came back towards like the middle of June. We've been missing a couple Saturdays due to the Olympics, but Deku has finally entered the we're finally, we're finally, finally, out of many episodes of what I just feel like is you guys milking this. We're finally getting to the Deku versus Shigaraki fight that they have been building up since after they had that first big fight in yeah. season seven. Yeah. So we finally, we're finally getting to that point. I don't know. Um, as of this recording, I don't know if a new episode dropped today, but if it has, um, great. Let's see what they do, but. The only thing I have to say about these this next string of episodes from My Hero is why the fuck did 
old boy stick his booty cheeks up in Shigaraki's face. I'm not going to lie. That scene pissed me off because <laughs> it, 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 it reignited a trauma response that I felt when we saw Sexy Jutsu against Kagui. And I was like, no. This, 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 no, no, put your booty, put your cheeks down, not stop peachy, doing your booty up. Not Peachy King, not we're down. Your voice went out, Foop. It might be because, it, it might be because of the same issue with your mic earlier. But, but to the fans, bro, y'all let me know. I don't like, I, I was like, y'all talk about fan service from animes like Fire Force and stuff. I'm sorry, I don't want to see Vermilion's booty tooted up. To stop a threat like Shigaraki. I don't like it. I don't respect it. I don't appreciate it. It did not make me laugh. It made me angry. <laughs> and I still can't hear you, Foo, but I see you laughing. It pissed me off. I hear you now. Oh, no, I heard a breath. I don't hear you no more. It's now not, I hear something from you. Now I hear you. It's not picking up my mic. What's... I hear you now. I don't know what happened earlier. You can hear me now? Yeah. It just went out again. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Now I can hear you. Where's my mic coming from? You can mute while recording, but you can't switch mics. You're not even telling me what mic I'm using. All right, yeah. but you but you can hear me though? I can hear you. All right, well, let me know if I go out again. But I definitely, I definitely agree with you. That wasn't needed. I know it's in the manga because I saw the manga panel side by side with this. This wasn't needed. Like, we're down to the wire. You're trying to figure out how to distract Shigaraki. You need something for two seconds. I just feel like being double cheeked up on a Tuesday afternoon in that <laughs> um in that damn arena. What are, what are they calling it? Uh something above uh, the heavens. Uh, yes, yeah, sky above the heavens. Sky so above something. sky above the heavens or whatever. I just feel like being double cheeked up against the major op. I mean, it worked. <laughs> Very weird it worked, that it worked, but that blew me. That blew me. It, like coming off, like coming off the episode and uh spoilers, cover your ears. I won't say it, but coming off the episode before then, if you remember the episode that happened before, and then we're turning around, and then at the end of this episode, I was like, You guys aren't serious. You guys aren't serious. But and that's what I'm saying. Like, I get it. Like, please, y'all don't butcher us and be like, y'all ain't real anime fans or something like that. But I'm sorry. In very serious moments, y'all have to pick and choose when comedy is appropriate. And that just felt very, very flat. That for me. just felt, that felt. Now, now I will say his reaction was appropriate because it's not like the dude was like, oh my gosh, booty cheeks, booty cheeks, <laughs> booty cheeks. He, he did stop and just go like, huh? And that was it. Because I watched a new episode that came out today, and I'm not going to spoil it. But I was like, okay, at least that reaction was normal. But y'all could have... Oh, so there is a new episode out? Yeah, I watched it before this recording. Okay. Is Part that... of the reason why I was a little late. Because I had to, like, get dressed and put on my Oh, now, thing. first it was crackers. Before we got into I this... I did get before, crackers. Before, I did. Before we got into this recording, Ryan was like, you know, I was running a little bit late because I wanted to eat some crackers. Now he wanted to watch hey. anime, get dressed, eat crackers... Crazy word. It was everything. Cause I, I I was like, I'm a little hungry. The episode was good. I need to put my beard cream in so it can be a little shiny. I just got a haircut. I'm looking good. You know what I'm saying? Type type shit, you know? You make me sick. Um <laughs> you make me sick. Either way, either way, I just feel like that could have been someone like we cut shit from the manga all the time. We could have cut that part. We could have. We could have. I was like, y'all not serious. Y'all not serious at all. But that's all our, what we've been watching. Um, So if you haven't been checking out any of these series, uh, make sure you check them out. Or at least try to check them out based on our recommendations. We're going to keep on pushing um, to our next topic, which is the Disney Experience Showcase, otherwise known as D23 2024. We got a lot of announcements. We got some Marvel news. We got some Disney, Pixar announcements. And we got some theme park announcements. So if you guys recall, we've been having some conversations about Universal as far as Epic Universe and some other projects that they've been working on. And Disney might be coming with the heat. 
But let's go through, let's start with these Marvel announcements. So for 2024, uh, we got the Eyes of Wakanda, um, which is going to be four episodes. Um, They didn't put like the month. They're just saying 2024. Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. The only release date I saw was coming off of IMDb. They said the first episode for that is supposed to release November 2nd, 2024. And then we have Marvel Zombies which is going to be rated mature on Disney Plus, mm. And it's going to be a four episode miniseries. Eyes of Wakanda is also supposed to be a four episode miniseries. Uh, coming into 2025, um, Ironheart's supposed to be coming. Um, the trailer got leaked. If you were following all the D23 announcements, the trailer for Ironheart did get leaked. But given that D23 was a week ago, those videos might still not be there. Uh, the Thunderbolts trailer uh, got leaked. And we got some news on Daredevil Born Again, the Disney Plus series that I believe they're supposed to be continuing the story from when Daredevil was on Netflix, um, those seasons, which is coming March 2025. Um, Other projects that got announced, but we don't have any dates yet. What If Season 3, which is going to be the final season of the What If franchise. And we got a little bit of insight into X-Men 97 season two. We got to look at some new suits as well as some characters that they're going to be putting into this new season. Can't remember everybody, but I know I was stoked about Polaris um, entering the scene. She's going to be in X-Men 97 season two. But um, let's go ahead and run the clock on the Marvel announcements, Ryan. Which one um, are you excited for? Mm. <laughs> I don't want to sound like no I don't want to sound like a Disney hater bro but it's like none of it really caught my eye like with the um Eyes of Wakanda I know you said that's a series is it like live action is it animation it's and does animated. it tie into the so does it tie into the current story of Black of Black Panther not no I'll say no based on the description of the series but Eyes of Wakanda your friendly hood na- your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man Marvel Zombies are all going to be animated series. Now, Eyes of Wakanda, a little bit more info into that. The synopsis is that throughout Wakandan history, brave warriors have been tasked to travel the world retrieving dangerous vibranium artifacts. So I did see a little tidbit that they're going to be going, they're going to be like doing like a time traveling type thing. So we're going to be able Mm -hmm. to see Wakanda in different time periods. Um, I'm not sure how true that is. but um it might be interesting um i don't see it tying into black panther of what we already got though i i don't want to sound like a disney hater when it just comes to those marvel marvel mcu series drops none of it really caught my eye now x-men 97 because i know you've given it so many flowers and so much praise it is in my backlog. It is one of those things, and I'm actually touching my backlog since I'm watching Full Metal Alchemist. But X Men '97 is probably one of those things. If I find time to watch season one, I might grapple grapple on the season two. I think you might like Marvel Zombies too. So Marvel Zombies is, I think this came from in What If season one. They had an episode where a zombie outbreak happened, and all of and there was a subset of heroes like Spider Man, Scarlet Witch. Um, can't remember who else was there but there was a subset of heroes that were fighting the zombies now Mm -hmm. i think that this series is going to focus on that universe because the whole what if premise is that we're in these different universes where these different things happen i think marvel zombies is going to focus in on that universe i also believe that marvel zombies is an actual comic book storyline so Mm. i would be interested to see what they pull from the comics and how this if and how this is going to tie back to that zombies episode and what if season one so and with it being rated mature this i would say this to me let me know if i'm incorrect Mm -hmm. in the comments i think this is the first mature animated series coming to disney as in terms of marvel Mm -hmm. content so I wonder what that means for the future. If it does well, are they going to take more risk? Like, it seems like they fully accept Deadpool now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, is Disney finna hit that 
switcheroo and be like, our content is for adults too, finally. <laughs> it's not just for kids. I I would be interested. I would be interested to see what limits they push because I remember hearing some complaints when Moon Knight came out. M, I believe Moon Knight was rated mature. But the I guess the mature themes that they put in the series was kind of like, hey, this could have just been TV 14 or this didn't or it didn't push the envelope that we thought you guys were going to push the envelope by saying that this was a mature series. But I think with Daredevil, Deadpool, Daredevil, Daredevil is also going to be rated mature. And then if you've watched the Netflix uh, series of this, there are some like heavy mature like violence and themes going on in it. I think Echo, I don't remember if Echo was rated mature, but I would see how far they push the envelope for Marvel Zombies, as well as with it being animated because we talk about all the time about how things can be elevated and like there's so much more you can do in animation than you can do in live action i would exactly. be willing to see if they're going to push the envelope with marvel zombies by calling this a mature project hmm. okay and what and what caught your eye out of all of those um marvel zombies um, they didn't release a trailer or anything for your friendly Spider-Man, so I'm gonna wait for the trailer with that. Um, Thunderbolts, that trailer leak, that's gonna be nice. That's gonna be nice. I think you would like that, Ron. We're going back to like the street Marvel, like we're getting out of all of like the mystical stuff. So we're going back to like the street level heroes. Yelena's coming back. Ghost from Ant Man and the Wasp. Taskmaster from uh Black Widow. Bucky, so Winter Soldier, U.S. Agents gonna be in there, and it's given like the way that it was described. I kind of agree with based on the trailer. They said they would describe this as Marvel's Suicide Squad. Huh. Okay. So based on the trailer and given the people who are on the team, because these aren't good people. Like Bucky had right. that. Like Bucky had that time where he like redeemed himself, but like. Going back in history of Winter yeah. Soldier's history, he ain't redeemed himself for me. <laughs> mm. So, like all of like all of these people, I would say that er everybody on this lineup have dark pasts. At one mm -hmm. point of time, they were they were the ops, or they still are the ops. So, right. I I like what I saw in the trailer. I'm interested to see how this plays out. Um, Ironheart is. Caught my eye because I didn't know that Ryan Coogler, who did Black Panther uh, and Wakanda Forever, was going to be over the project. So I'm okay. interested. I'm. I guess I would say, um, I'm satisfied or like I'm glad that he has the project with Ironheart being like a black woman female character in the mcu and her getting her own solo series and what we've seen with ryan coogler do with black panther i would i would fully say that i'm glad that he's he's over the series okay um x-men 97 you already know yeah what if season three i shrugged i really like what if season one i liked it so much that i thought that like Marvel was like going to be beating on DC's door as far as animation. And as we fast forward that, I think that first season maybe dropped 2021, 22, as we fast forward now, with everything else they're coming up, they're still banging on DC's door. But what if season one, when they came out with that animated project, I was like, Oh yeah, Marvel's coming. Season two was a letdown for me. Wasn't a big fan of season two. Hopefully gotcha. see half, hopefully season three comes back and, you know, they can end this off on a good note, and I'll just be like, hey, you guys had two good seasons instead of saying, you know, season one is the only good shit coming out of what if. Okay. Okay. There go y'all Disney show recommendations for 2024 and onward. Yeah. We might have some different opinions when these come out, but <laughs> I, I, think, I think the updates that came out of Marvel for D23 we're pretty nice. good. I think we, I think as Marvel fans, we have some, some good projects to look forward to. 
moving into the Disney Pixar announcement. So this is going to be a mix of Disney animated movies, Disney projects like TV series, etc., as well as Pixar projects. Starting with 2024, we got Moana 2 coming out November 27th, 2024. The Wizards of Waverly Place reboot, Wizards Beyond Waverly Place, um, doesn't have a month, but they're saying 2024. And then Pixar is uh, dropping a series on Disney Plus called Win or Lose that is supposed to drop December 6th, 2024. Moving into 2025, we got the first trailer for the Snow White live action coming out March 21st, 2025. Zootopia 2 is supposed to be coming out November 26, 2025. Avatar 3, Fire and Ash, December 19th, 2025. We got a little teaser for the Lilo and Stitch live action, which is supposed to be dropping summer 2025. And then the Freaky Friday uh, sequel, Freakier Friday, is also supposed to be coming out 2025. And then looking at 2026 and beyond, Toy Story 5 drops June 19th, 2026. Frozen 3 is uh, slated for 2027. And then we got announcements for Incredibles 3 and uh, a Tiana series spinning off from Princess and the Frog. But those announcements didn't have any dates. So 2027 is crazy work. They got to keep... Yeah. I... I only feel like they said it, and we say this all the time. I only feel like they said it because Frozen is one as as of like the twenty like twenty tens, twenty twenties. Frozen is one of Disney's biggest franchises. Yeah, like that for a certain for a very specific generation of kids, it it was it is that it is that I will I agree. So I like. Agree. 2027 is crazy work given that we're in august 2024 right now that is crazy work but i just feel like it's kind of like when they announced the the avatar movie like the whole avatar studios thing like back when we were like in what 2022 2021 yeah. and now and then pandemic and the movie's not even coming out until like 2025 i feel like that's what Frozen Three is and and now in announcing Incredibles Three with no year no day, they gonna say twenty thirty three for Incredibles Three. They're like we gonna line it up, we gonna make it work. Cause how long did it take for Incredibles Two to come out? Like didn't they say they was working on that for years? That was well, I think it was. They weren't sure if they were, or I feel like the situation was they weren't getting a sequel, and then they were like, oh, we're getting a sequel. Cause I feel like there's like a 14, 15 year gap between yeah. Incredibles 1 and Incredibles 2. I hope that it doesn't take that long to get to Incredibles 3 and they close that gap. But Jack Jack better be at least 10 years old by now. Jack Jack gotta be Jack's age. Yeah. Not Jack's yeah. Dash's age. Dash. Dash gotta be a bit older. I saw a tweet about uh people hoping that Violet finally reaches her full potential. Because every episode, yeah. if not every episode, every movie is like all oh, Violet's, you know, reaching her full potential, but she's not there yet. I like her powers are actually sick. She's actually she has the potential to be the coldest one there. Actually, That's, uh, is hello. Like Jack Jack Fire, obviously, but like Violet in terms of like mm-hmm. the force fields and invisibility and other stuff, like she she has the potential to be fire. Yeah, like for real, like she could be like Invisible Woman from Fantastic yeah. Four. Honest, honestly, honestly, I wonder if the third Incredibles. I know we got to talk about the other franchises, but I wonder if Incredibles three are is it going to be like a past the mantle type of movie? Like now the parents are passing to their kids if the kids are a lot older and like now they're in that realm of we're the next generation of superheroes. I feel like that would be fitting. If, if I could see if it that's working. your if that's your theory, I definitely agree because Incredibles one was focused on Bob. Mr. Incredible. Incredibles 2 was focused on Elastigirl. I think it would be fitting if Incredibles 3 solely focuses on the kids. And yeah. And they're and like the that, big, the new the, hero. Right. And they are the, you know, the up and coming heroes. Like mom and dad can't do it no more. Like, you know, we're retired. We want to sit down. And the villain is solely focused on it's their villain. Yeah. It's their opposition. I could see that really working. I feel like it would, I think it's the appropriate time. And especially if they're going to turn it to make another fourth movie or fifth movie in the saga mm-hmm. for that, for the next generation of Incredibles fan, I fans, I see that working too. 
Now, Incredibles was a franchise that I think Disney did really well with bringing that back. Because you wait, you wait 14, 15 years, you have a whole new generation of kids to like expose this franchise to. Exactly. So now, so now you have, now you have that excuse of, oh, why don't we make a third Incredibles? Well, you saw how the second one did. Exactly. It makes a lot of sense. I, even, I will say this though, when I watched it, I did enjoy it, but I would have loved if it did come earlier, only mm-hmm. because that hype did die down because I was such a huge fan of The Incredibles back when I was younger. Like, I watched The Incredibles 1 probably like four or five times. More than that, really. Well, it all it all goes back that to the fact that I, I guess I would say I was glad that Disney went back and picked that up and not mm-hmm. made it like a one and done type thing. Right. So... But um, when it comes to their other Pixar announcements, I'm going to say this about the series. I don't think I'm going back to Wizards of Waverly Place beyond Waverly Place. I, I thoroughly enjoy Wizards of Waverly Place. I don't think I'm going back to that, though. I... It didn't give. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. It didn't give. The reboot... It wasn't given. The trailer, the little teaser thing that they gave us, it didn't give. Yeah, like I enjoyed the movies. The series was one of my favorite Disney series because I wasn't no Disney kid back in the day, but I did watch Wizards of Waverly Place. I loved the fantasy and the magic, mm-hmm. but it didn't. I'm I I don't know if I'm too old. I don't know if I grew out of it. I don't know what it. I'm not going back to it. If this new generation of teenagers and at and kid, toddlers and kids want to watch it, y'all enjoy it. I hope y'all like it, but it doesn't look like it's for me. Yeah, I. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm gonna check it out. Um I am, am excited about the Snow White live action. Um the actress who's playing Snow White is Rachel Zegler, who played um What's Her Face in Hunger Games, mm-hmm. Battle of the Song vs. Snake. So I really like her her voice, like her singing and things like that. So I was gonna check it out. Um You think they're gonna beat that controversy that was kind of attached to like the old Snow White reveal trailers? What was the controversy? It was a few things. I know one of the bigger ones, because they only had one person in the show with dwarfism, and the other six were, like, traditionally sized adults, a lot of people in that in the dwarfism community were like, this was y'all time to really have us in here, and y'all did us dirty. This is not you being accepting. This is the complete opposite. And then I think that's what led to the pushback, and now they got all the animated dwarves. Hmm. I knew nothing about that. I remember that was one of the things. And it seems like they're also only I only know this because I think once we was typing this stuff up and I was putting it in our backlog, you know how cash data worked. Mm-hmm. And now all of the old stuff started popping up. I noticed I remember this coming up, but this always happens. Like, OK, they're getting away from the prince and they're making a more modern story. Some people are mad about that, but that's kind of expected like it is what it is. But I know that when it came to the dwarfism and how they didn't give them representation for real, that a lot of people from that community were upset. And now they got the animated dwarves, it seems, to replace all of the original actors. I didn't know anything about that. I would have to read more into it. Um, But I will say, like, when the trailer came out, I still didn't see anything about that when they dropped the trailer. Mm -hmm. So I would have to look more into that. Because I didn't, I didn't know that that was going on with that movie. See, I'm not much of a Disney princess fan. I just know little bits and pieces of it popped up on my timeline mm-hmm. back in the day. And then I started seeing more of that information coming out again because I guess, like, you know how the Google works. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they're going to beat that. I wonder. Because, like, they already invested the money. I think it's like a couple hundred dollar, million dollar project. So, Oh, if they've invested millions of dollars, this is about to be. Yeah. They, they ship in that movie. They're shipping yeah. it. I, I, it ain't going nowhere. Yeah, they're shipping that. I, hmm, because I, I, cause they dropped the trailer at D23, and I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything about that. Mm-hmm. But I guess I, other than Snow White, the Lilo and Stitch thing, I thought I thought it was a joke. Long as Nami thick. <laughs> hey. Hey. Because out of hey. all these live actions, I might go watch that. And 
I ain't finna get into all the politics of all the race and all that other stuff swapping. Long as Nami thick. Long as <laughs> Nami and all them other surfboard riding women are thick. And for all the folks, oh, this is a kid's movie. It's not that we sexualizing they, them. They was thick. They was thick in the animated series. They was thick back in the day. Have you seen Mr. Bubbles? Big, Look. thick black man. Talking about he a social worker. He would be. He, he was. Big, big. And- he he, he was. Everybody, everybody, everybody was sticking that movie. Look, I would just say on the because the only teaser they gave us, they showed us what Stitch looks like, and I feel like that was a good move because he did look pretty good. Because if everybody remembers the Sonic situation when they didn't even show us what Sonic looked like until that first trailer came out, and and they had to go back to the drawing board, Disney said, "Oh, we not we not making that mistake. We finna show y'all this first. Be like, do y'all like the CGI or not? Because this is this is the vibe. This is for all the other aliens. Yeah, so I thought he looked good. It looked good. Now, am I? Do I feel like this Lilo and Stitch live action is necessary? Absolutely not. Are any of these live actions really necessary? Only the villain ones. Which I'll do I that because they differ. Which, but I wouldn't even consider those remakes. I wouldn't consider them live action remakes. Alternatives. Uh, live action alternatives. Yeah. Those are fire. Maleficent, fire. Cruella, fire. Like, but everything else. Here's the thing. I wouldn't like, I probably wouldn't have watched this. I will say this. I will say this because I enjoyed Lilo and Stitch. They could have just did a reboot of the animation or take it from a different story or follow someone else in well, um, the Lilo and Stitch world. I would say this. I would say this. I honestly feel like this live action is milking Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch has three movies. It do. And an animated series. That did a crossover with Kim Possible. I do remember that. That was good. <laughs> and they had a ride at Magic and they had a ride at Magic Kingdom. Yeah, and and you know what? That's the thing. That's the thing. I don't think... Go ahead. I'm not in full support of Disney live actioning all of their old IPs, but I'm not going to lie. I enjoy Lilo and Stitch enough compared to everything else. I might... I'm probably going to watch this if ain't nothing else out. Like, if there's nothing else out and I'm like, I want to go on a date and go to the movies with somebody or I'm going to go by myself, I would watch Lilo and Stitch. And that's fair because this is... This feels different from all of the live actions. I would like to see the trailer. Are they going to keep the fun by... Because all of the right. live action Disney series have been like very serious or very like Disney princess focused. And they've all been like musicals. And like Lilo yeah. and Stitch is that one. Um, you know, there's not... They have music, but it's not like Lilo stops in the middle of her hula practice and belts out a note and then goes back to her hula practice. Like... I want to see the vibe of what they're going for this Lilo and Stitch. Is it going to give me fun summer movie, summertime movie, aliens girl in Hawaii? Gets an alien after being bullied. Right. Yeah. Is it going to give me that same vibe? Like, and and with the the family mixed in it, the family uh, morals and concepts and values. Is it going to give me that? Now, if you can give me all of that, you might have something Disney. I'll let you slide. And, and what was that alien's name? Because there was two of them that were kind of like hunting Clickly, them down. The big Clickly one. Clickly and uh and Jumba. Jumba was the big one that looked like a hey, whale. Clickly, killer whale. Well, Clickly however, gotta have they bob. Look. Let me say this. Oh yeah. <laughs> let me say this, and I'm I'm gonna look dead at the camera, dead at the camera. Clickly better have that bob, and I'm not playing, and I'm not playing. Look, he did have that bob on the bob, and they dress. And they close. Listen, l- <laughs> let's not change. But how this is up. that going to trend? I want to know how that's going to translate to live action, though, because that's going to be so freaking crazy. I don't care. Bro. I don't care. <laughs> so crazy. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. With that one, with you that did one it. big you eye. Did it. I don't. <laughs> they better look good. They better look good. They better have that bob because if you not gonna show me three movies, an animated series, and a crossover with Kim Possible, and Plickly don't have that bob. Gotta have a bob. Gotta have that bob. 
That's that's how you'll get me. That's how you'll get me. If that trailer shows Pleakley and Jumba and Jumba with his Hawaiian shirt on his shorts and Pleakley with that bob, you got it. And thank Nani. Nani. (laughs) Let's not forget. Let's not forget. But I would be interested to see when a full trailer comes out for this. Because if they're talking about summer 2025, it's coming soon. Probably not this month, probably not the next month, but a trailer is going to be coming eventually, and I would like to see how everybody's going to look. And it seems like we're still finna milk the blue people version of Avatar like it's just the best thing since that, sliced bread. James Cameron, ice- James Cameron said he had five movies. I couldn't even get through the first one. I mm-hmm. fell asleep on the first one. Look, y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. I I watched one and two. And it was okay, but I don't know what type of marketing y'all have to where y'all just make everybody believe this is like the most amazing movie franchise. But the thing, ever. But the I thing don't about get it, but the thing about I don't it, get it, I feel like Disney probably wouldn't have green light, green lit the rest of them because Avatar: Way of the Water brought in the coin. They made their money. They made their money on, on their second one. It was here's the thing. It wasn't a bad movie, but it ain't a great movie either. Like it did nothing special. Like I enjoyed it. I it wasn't bad, Look, but it wasn't great. It was just six, seven. Did we do a mob review for that? Nah, cause I ain't gonna see it. It was like it was like oh yeah, that was before we did the solo reviews. It was like a six out of ten at the highest of seven if you thoroughly enjoyed it. But I don't see it on average being that amazing movie that the marketing material made it seem like it is. I. I ain't got nothing to say for it. I fell asleep watching the first one. Y'all can have it. That's that's my only that's my only statements on the Avatar franchise. I I'm gonna watch it because I do watch them, but it's like it's not one of those movies that I went back to and watched the second or third time. I did not do that. No, it's it's not Harry Potter. It's not OG Transformers. It's it's not Star Wars. I'm not even a Star Wars fan. I know it's not there. It's it's not that. Well, you heard it here first. Ryan said it's a dub. He's calling it a dub. Look, Look the good last... mid. Good mid. <laughs> good mid. That's, I got I to gotta relate to the younger folks. It's it's good mid. Not good mid. Man, but the last, the last thing I want to talk about before we get into the theme park announcements. Toy Story 5. Now, the concept of them taking on the iPad kids. Sure. But five Toy Stories, they really could have stopped after three. I feel like Toy Story 4 was a waste. Five also seems like a waste. We really could have stopped at three. Go go back. Y'all go back and watch our Pixar versus DreamWorks um, tournament. I'm not commenting because I think people got on my ass for saying Toy that. Story can Toy go. I know what I said. I, Toy, Toy Story, Story can that. go. <laughs> Um, I after the third one, after the third one, it was just like okay, because that I fourth, don't see I it. don't even remember. The only thing I remember from that fourth movie is that that fork, that fork that she made at school that turned into a toy. That's the only thing I remember from that movie. I I get that y'all want to appeal to the kids and the next generation, but I feel like they deserve better. I feel, <laughs> Sorry, I, I only feel like I only feel like they had to double back with Toy Story because Lightyear, the Buzz. Lightyear did movie. good, didn't it? No, it didn't do good. No, no. <laughs> really? They ain't sell no toys, no nothing. I, I didn't. I knew I wasn't going to watch it, but I didn't know if the kids liked it or not. I heard it wasn't good. Oh, how to do in the box? The global, not even the global box office, just the regular box I'm office finna versus go see. how much they invested. I'm going to see. So at the box office, they made two hundred twenty-six point four million USD. I <sighs> guess. That's, I, they that's, had to invest at least about a hundred into that, though. That they're not the te- animations. They're not telling. They're not showing me how much they put into the movie. But going off the Google ratings, it has a two point seven. What's this Metacritic and IMDb? And so what, IMDb, IMDb gave it a six point one out of ten. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a seventy four, and Letterbox, which that's like personal, like um people put in their scores for it. They gave it a 2.8 out of 5. So it so seems like seems based like on the, the rates, were... it sounds like, once again, good mid. But I heard good people mid. didn't like it. It was good mid. It was probably good mid or mid mid. 
or maybe maybe they maybe this maybe they made like 227 million at the box office but maybe they were expecting more for the people who want to know what good mid is if mid slash four average is like five good mid is like 5.56 6.2 that's not like good mid good mid it's almost it sounded like it was almost there what's our rating scale almost there that's what it sounded like there but um I don't know, man. I don't. I think I would. I don't know if I if I'm just bored. Maybe I'll go see Toy Story five in the theaters. But the way movie tickets are like steadily increasing, you really got to pick and choose about what you want to. You really got to pick. Noticed that. Hello. I think I spent like twenty five dollars on some XD tickets. Am I tripping? Let me. Do I got that screenshot? But um. You really got to pick and choose what movies you want to go to, especially with like Toy Story is definitely a family film. So uh, you and your family of four, if we're rounding up to like movie tickets are like $20 a person. And the, and the popcorn, you want popcorn, to get large popcorn. Drinks and stuff. You, that that adds up, my gene. So this Toy you Story. And, you fi- and your wife better split that drink. I'm going to say this. While y'all standing in line going to see Toy Story 5, I'm standing in line to see Shrek 5. Now what? Yeah. Now yeah. what? <laughs> you seen that you seen that movie that um it's like a meme or a little short video where it's like the guy who's married versus a guy that's single, the guy that's married got like a KitchenAid or a blender, and the guy that's single got a PS5. <laughs> we walking in there going to see we seen Shrek 5, you over there looking sad, going to see Toy Story. I'm going to see, family. I'm going to see Shrek 5 and Shrek. And DreamWorks better pull out a good ass storyline. For Shrek this 5. is their time to redeem themselves. It's been enough time. Yeah, and y'all can redeem yourselves. Like some got some got to move. We can get four Kung Fu pandas. Yeah, y'all can bring the heat with Shrek Five. And, People still asking want, for Kung Fu Panda. Come on. And I want some Shrek Two energy. Keep the satire in there. The realistic they, references. Look, enough done happened. This is the recipe. Because Puss in Boots: The Last Wish is like. That was great. That had the satire of Shrek 2 while and the, the the animation was great while appealing to a younger audience. If that is the bar, and mm-hmm. that's that's the bar that I want them to hit. If you can give me Puss and Boost the last wish for Shrek 5, y'all got it. Y'all got yeah. it in the bag. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. They can redeem themselves. I feel like. That movie DreamWorks. was so good that we had to publicly apologize to Ralph because we laughed at him. When he, when, when, he, when we when, did that um 2022, yes. was it? Expectations? Yes, we had to publicly apologize to Ralph for laughing at him. That movie that movie was good. That's why he don't be in these episodes. He said, y'all ain't finna bully my opinions no more. We, we apologize, Ralph. We, we apologize, Come Ralph. Come back. But um, let's get into these theme park announcements because there was a lot. Just reading down the list, I split it up into Orlando, California, and the international parks. There was some more news regard- regarding like new um, parade shows, um, restaurants, and like small things. But this right here Too is <laughs> right. It was a lot, but this right here is going to be theme park. Like big like rides, lands, things like that. So starting with Orlando, they're going to be introducing a villains land at Magic Kingdom. Basically, the vibe is is that this is where all of the Disney villains live. Um, they're putting Indiana Jones and Encanto attractions in Animal Kingdom. Two Cars attractions are coming to Magic Kingdom. In um, I like that. They're putting they it right. in Frontierland, I believe, and a Monsters Inc. land is coming to Hollywood Studios, and it's going to introduce Disney's first suspended roller coaster. Um, in California, a Coco ride is coming to Disney California Adventure, and will be taking inspiration from the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of Caribbean rides. They're putting an Avatar land in Disney's California Adventure. Um, the di- the Avengers attraction that they've been building inside of Avengers Campus at Disneyland is officially going to be called Avengers Infinity Defense. Okay. And they're introducing a ride called Start Flight Lab 
where RDJ has filmed scenes to return as Iron Man. Huh. International. I, I would have liked to see that in Orlando. Me too. We'll get we'll get to that. For international, Disneyland Paris is getting a Lion King attraction in area, and a Spider Man roller coaster is coming to Disneyland Hong Kong in Shanghai. So we can spend the block on Avengers Campus because Orlando needs it. Why doesn't Orlando have now? I heard that Avengers Campus when they first came out was a little bit lackluster. I think they only had that one Spider Man ride, and then they had the things, and they do have the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. They've uh, transformed Disney Ca- Disney's California Adventures Tower of Terror into a Guardians of the Galaxy elevator drop ride. Right. So they did have those, but overall, I heard the spe- the experience for Avengers Campus was a bit lackluster. And com- and I think they might have been comparing it to the Marvel area in Islands of Adventure at Universal. Which, if you put the two side by side, Universal is taking it. But yeah. I think this Infinity Defense ride might put them up there, up there as well as the Stark Flight Lab. But I really think it's going to be Infinity Defense. I feel like Orlando has their Marvels. I think the only... Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, if I'm talking shit, if I'm talking out my ass, but I think the only MCU theme ride that they have at Walt Disney World is the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rerun, Rerun ride at Epcot. They don't have a full to... set out MCU area. I wonder if it has to do with some of the um, rights that Universal has to Marvel, some of the Marvel stuff being that they're also in the same state. Because, you know, like some state governing business laws and LLCs and all that mm. might conflict. Similar to why, like, certain restaurants, they don't have the same name in other states. I wonder if I want I'm not I'm just that's just a big stretch. But I wonder if there's some legal stuff behind that. That's because I would have loved an Iron Man Stark Tower ride in Orlando. Like Avengers Campus, like. Should have been something that, that that they should have been planning to put in Orlando. But the fact that you bring that up, I wonder if that's the reason. Because they don't have an Islands of Adventure in Universal Studios Hollywood. There's not an Islands. There's not an Islands of Adventure. So that that could that could be the case. And that sucks. That sucks. From a consumer, fr- from from a, a consumer from a cons- perspective, From a sucks. consumer standpoint, that sucks. Because the Infinity... What I've heard from the Avengers... Um, Infinity Defense ride is that they are fighting. The storyline is that the Avengers, I think, is like a multiverse. It might be a multiverse thing that they are fighting an entity of entity, a variant of Thanos called King Thanos, and we're supposed to be traveling through Wakanda, New York, all of these different places from the MCU inside of this ride. Yeah, it. It, and it sounds it look it sounds fun like I don't because correct me if I'm wrong Disney technically from their theme parks like obviously all of them drive income and they care about them all but isn't like Florida's the one that's like there we truly invest the most into this because it has the most land to expand and all of that good stuff yeah so I, I like, think they might just be trying to build out Disneyland some more though because they don't no, they don't no have land in L A no but I meant like giving it more like giving it this avengers campus thing gives people a reason to go to disneyland because of what you just said which i was about to mention is that this compared to disney world disneyland is small and they they just can't announce like an expansion like how they can announce an expansion for disney world so this might be that this might be that thing it might not even be rights at all rights state rights might come into play but it might not be rights at all. This might be like we need a reason to get people to come to Disneyland, Avengers yeah. Campus, and it, it yeah, because we will never know the truth behind it. But I'm, it, I, I didn't even get to go to Disneyland because I was sick when all of my friends were in town and I had strep throat. But like Disney World was so great, like I definitely see why people go there like every year with their families. Like I would love to go back and like experience something like that at Disney World. Yeah, so that that could be the reason why they're not doing any Avengers. Like the only MCU attraction that we have is the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, mm-hmm. and it, it could possibly just be that 
the way that that ride building is set up, it might not even fit in that Avengers campus area that they have set up. Probably. Like the fact that they had to turn Tower of Terror into some Guardians of the Galaxy attraction instead of just building Cosmic Rerun in Disneyland, it's probably they don't have the space for it. Probably. But but with everything else, um, I think the I, the idea of Villains Land at Magic Kingdom, even though I'm not the biggest Disney nerd, I can see that being fire. Not yeah. going to cap. I, I can see that being fire. Um, Monster Inc. Land as a Monsters Inc. fan, I want to go there. I if think it's going to be lit. World, I want to go there. Concept, go the there. concept art of it mm-hmm. looks lit. The suspended roller coaster. So I think it's supposed to simulate, you know, how in the movie, how the doors were going around. Yeah. I think that I think that's what the coaster is supposed to simulate. That's fire. I like Monsters Inc. That's fire. Um, We didn't get to see Animal Kingdom. I have nothing to say about that. Cars. Even though it was only Cars 1 and we learned that from the Pixar vs. DreamWorks tournament, I did enjoy Cars. I have good memories of Cars. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad either because the rides that they're replacing, I think it's like Tom Sawyer's River Adventure and some other ride. And I don't believe I've ever been on those rides in my life in like all the years I've been to Walt Disney World. So yeah, let's go ahead and gut that out. And put a franchise yeah. that's actually going to get people to go back there. Yeah, I think it's fire. I feel like I feel like they heard about Epic Universe from Universal, and they said we coming for y'all next in a few years. We coming for y'all. I the top. I have a top three contenders of things that could push Disney over the edge of Epic Universe. Um, the Monsters Inc. Land. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna take it. Villains Land at Magic Kingdom. Only uh, the only reason that's in my top contenders list because Epic Universe is supposed to have an area called Dark Universe, which is monsters based. Now they're not gonna have the same vibe. I already know that going in because with them putting Villains Land and Magic Kingdom, Magic Kingdom is basically the family friendly part of Walt Disney World. Dark Universe seems to be pushing the envelope a bit more with the monsters. The ride that the main attraction for that ride is not like kid friendly. It doesn't feel kid friendly. It's not like put your four year old on this ride and ride. They're gonna be crying. Yeah, that's what that's what it gave. But I would love to see like Disney's takes on villains and how in depth they go into with this land, how in character, like the that actors and everything that they get to fit into it and how that compares to Dark Universe. And my third one is going to be it's go, it's going to have to be the Avengers area. It's going to have to be. I would like to see if adding this Infinity Defense ride and this Start Flight Lab ride takes Avengers Campus over the edge. Because it's like, we also got to look future forward, because like, even not only with the new rides, because there are people who want to go to those theme parks all the time, but like how you mentioned, like the villain live action movies do well, I'm pretty sure we're finna get a few more. I, I like this Mufasa live action, they finna probably bring up Scar and his background a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, cars they might drop a new ip for that at some point like though they might drop another monsters inc movie because monsters inc university is like five years well they had a series well they got that monsters inc series on disney plus so it's like it does tie back into their animated and live action content which is nice but universal got the same benefit on their side with epic universe because the harry potter series is coming out as well yeah, which would which would tie really well into that defense of the dark. I would not defense of dark. I, said, I would say this ministry. though. I would say this though. The Harry Potter area of Epic Universe is not going to be the star of that of that that. You think it's going to be that How to Train a Dragon? Section? No, that dark you... that dark universe that monsters oh, yeah, area yeah. that yeah, monsters right. area is sick, sickening. That is, how many is it? It's the monsters area. Train your dragons. Dark universe monsters, which is the monsters. Super Nintendo World, which is Super Nintendo World, oh, is that is number two. Really... It's my top four. I'm rating it because I I've been following this shit since they've been building this shit. Dark Universe is number one. Super Nintendo World is number two. How to Train Your Dragon is number three. The Harry Potter area is number four. 
when they showed yeah. that promo video for um the Harry Potter area, it was in. I'm I'm gonna be real. We're, I'm just a Harry Potter fan. I'm gonna enjoy it regardless, but I feel I do agree. That it minute, wasn't. that Ministry of Magic ride will probably be the best thing in there. And in in the Fantastic Beast show, they are doing a Fantastic Beast like stage show type thing. Now the attractions, yeah, the area compared to the other three, it's not gonna be the star. It's not gonna be the star of that theme park. That dark universe area is sickening. Is sickening. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. I see, and I forgot. I don't know how, but I forgot about Super Nintendo World. That's definitely bringing Super the kids Ninten- in. Super Nintendo World one because this is going to be bigger than the one that's in Universal Studios Hollywood because they're adding the Donkey Kong extension to it. And not let's not even mention the rumor that they're also going to extend it and put a Luigi's Mansion attraction in it. And they are, and what they already got is like Super Mario and Mario Kart based stuff. So that's mm-hmm. that's fire. Don't let don't let them start really growing into their Nintendo IPs. Don't really because they already because the already the other rumors that we had talked about on the previous episode, and not to step too far away from Disney, but they talked about integrating Pokemon inside of Universal Studios, and they talked about integrating Legend of Zelda inside of Islands of Adventure. They won with po- you know how much you can do with Pokemon. They they can make a Pokemon world. Pokemon World alone could be bigger than Nintendo World, which that's is so I'm, crazy. That's what I'm saying. So, like, but as far as Disney goes, those out of all of the projects that they listed out, those are the top three projects that I see that are going to like. If we talk about new expansions, those are, those are my only three that I feel like are going to hold up to Epic Universe because Epic Universe is going is insane. Let my camera f- resolution come back. Pokemon World, bro. <laughs> Pokemon World, hey! Epic Universe is insane. Universal is in when, when Epic Universe opens in twenty twenty five, is going to be insane. And the rumored expansions. That that's why Disney World has to do all this stuff because I'm sorry, Epic Universe, and because they got a lot of land to expand on. Correct, mm-hmm. like they. Like, Florida's going to let them have it. Like, they got laws just for Disney World and Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. Like, they they going to do what they got to do. They going to make that money. I, I'm, I'm going to say this. In the next couple years, because they said they've already started executing these projects. As far as, But as far as construction, I don't know when, like, the actual building of these attractions is going to start. But in the next couple years... It's going to be some stuff to look out for in both theme parks. <laughs> theme park wars. That's what we're getting. It's theme park wars. Basically, like Epic Universe is about to take it 2025. And then Disney's about to come out with all of these new attractions and expansions and things like that. It's, we're going to have a lot of new stuff to look at in the next couple of years. If content creation was actually a primary form of income for us. I would say, let's when we go to Universal, Epic Universe, let's make a video. But we finna be too busy having fun. I'm mm. packing my Harry Potter robes. Okay. I'm excited for, um, I guess everything. Like if I ever yeah. go international, I would love to check out the Lion King attraction in Disneyland Paris because I've seen a couple rides from Disneyland Paris and they got they got some heat over there. Honestly, yeah. If we did a Paris, a trip because Paris is in France, correct, which mm-hmm. is in the UK. If we was to ever do a European trip, let's let's make sure we do that. I do want to go to Italy and stuff for the food, but if we go to Paris, I, I, let's Disneyland let's, Paris. Let's Paris got, Disneyland Paris got some heat. They got let's some go, heat. Yeah. We finna be spending about five thousand dollars on a trip, but we got it. We hey. can, if we got a year to save, we can do that. <laughs> Give me two. <laughs> Give me, yeah. Just to be sure, just at minimum just, one and just, a, at minimum one and a half. Minimum one and a half, just to be at sure. Minimum, yeah, but she said that is five thousand dollars. That is a about. hey, and we trying to go to Disney. You already know the last time we went to Disney World. I wonder how much Disney World out in Paris costs in comparison to Disney World here, because that's already a thousand dollars on a plane ticket. Woo! About one, if we split in spots, that's still a good. It's eight hundred to a thousand a piece for a hotel for all of us and that's, lodging. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But and we getting souvenirs. We might have to ship that stuff from Paris to the U- for to America. Buy another suitcase. Hey, Seuss. What you talking about? Look, 
those are all of the announcements from D23 2024 that we have for you guys. Let us know in the comments of what you're looking forward to. What was your favorite announcement? Um, and what was your least favorite announcement? Like sometimes these showcases don't give us, you know, the juice for the squeeze. So let us know. But moving on to our next... The juice for the squeeze or enough juice from the squeeze? How does that go? I don't know how it went, but that's mine. <laughs> hey. The juice, if they did not give you the juice from the squeeze, that's how I'm going to say it until we, <laughs> until we figure out... Or is it the the juice it, The juice isn't worth the squeeze? I think that's how it goes. The juice isn't worth the squeeze. I think that's I how it goes. Ju- I can see that. The juice isn't worth the squeeze. <laughs> see, I was trying to I was trying to go ahead and move on and I had time to think of it. So the juice from the squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> but um moving on. So we got a bit more information on the One Piece reboot, which is going to be titled The One Piece. So at Jump Fiesta 2024, a huge announcement was made that Wit Studio and Netflix are partnering to produce a new and improved version of the beloved One Piece anime series. Um, This uh, new adaptation is going to feature condensed episode, a condensed episode count and updated animation and will be exclusively released on Netflix globally. So far, we only have confirmation that the One Piece will adapt the entirety of the East Blue Saga um, the director from Attack on Titan season one through season three. I think I spelled his name wrong. Masashi Koizuka is going to be over it. Um, that was all the news that I was able to get so far. But the hot take for this conversation, um, could this reboot convince anime watchers, given that the hesitancy for watching One Piece is the long episode count and the filler um inside of it would that convince them to start watching one piece and 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 let's put more respect on which studio attack on titan seasons one through three were good but let's give them some more respect oh, Spy family they're also doing suicide squad east guy mm-hmm. in the past they did the spy family seasons villain saga ancient maggots bride which looked good um ranking of kings i didn't watch that but it looked good which studio got that experience? Um, honestly, to y'all One Piece, to y'all anime fans that have not watched One Piece, at first I was like, "Why are we rebooting this?" There's so many other series that could get a, that could get continuations and reboots. But One Piece, the manga came out in like the '90s. The anime started, I want to say, like 2002. I can't remember the year exactly. Like we're condensing they might it, they might have the ability to condense what was like 400 one piece episodes into probably like 200 let alone 150 i think the article that i was looking at was like the east blue saga was like 50 something episodes and they said if they cut out all of the fluff it could be like 25 which makes which is it absolutely makes a lot of sense when you when you look at the pacing from One Piece compared to the manga, because I've looked at it, One Piece will make one punch that's like two pages long, two episodes. And that's not an exaggeration. They will make it take forever. Even some of the pacing in Wayno at some point was like, all right, now, Luffy been in the sky and this punch ain't hit Kaido yet. Three whole episodes have passed by. What are we doing here? Mm-hmm. So I think this would be perfect for incoming anime fans who, who want to try One Piece, I feel like this is less intimidating. Modern graphics, modern animations, and I think they may use the same voice actors, so that familiarity is there. Mm-hmm. And they might do it into a seasonal format. Like, if East Blue is just one 25-episode season, like, yes, bro, jump on that. The live action was good. Y'all see that the art, the characters, and the plot is there. I think this should convert a lot of anime fans who are who are who are fearful of watching a thousand plus amp episode anime into watching this. I think this will convert y'all over. I would agree. I feel like this is a reboot that solves a problem. You know, like yeah, because we were talking because how we were talking about like going back to the Disney thing about these live action remakes. Like, what's the problem we're trying to solve by remaking some of this stuff in live action? Or um, back when they were talking about that Naruto reboot, why are we rebooting Naruto? Like, what 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 was the problem? Or like, why why do we feel like we need a reboot? I feel like this One Piece reboot solves an actual problem 
of from the OG series that the pacing the pacing was horrible um starting out the graphics aren't that great compared to where it is now so now we're solving a couple different issues by putting out this reboot exactly i fully agree because like the naruto reboot one naruto didn't have much fluff they had a lot of filler episodes filler being non-canon not Filler as in an arc that isn't that big of a deal that was written by the mangaka. I'm so talking about filler that's non-canon material. Naruto did have quite a bit of filler, but you can look up filler list and skip it. And the animation, in my opinion, still holds up at a decent, does a decent job at holding up in the OG Naruto series. Mm-hmm. It didn't need a reboot. Neither did Bleach. Bleach deterred from the manga and missed out on some stuff, but it wasn't that bad. One Piece, that fluff is crazy. The fluff they add, because it's not filler, it's not much filler in One Piece. A lot of the content is canon. It's just what they're doing is making what could have been done in ten, two minutes stretch across 20. Mm-hmm. And it's terrible. The fluff is terrible. I wonder, I like, um, we don't have a release date for this. I think the most recent news we got on this, they started uh, showing like the storybook storybooking and everything that they've been doing towards this. I wonder how they're going to manage this alongside the One Piece live action. Since Whip Studio isn't over, it's interesting because Netflix got the publishing rights, you said, correct? I don't... I would assume so. Because they said Whip Studio and Netflix. Yeah. If Netflix invested some money to make sure they're the ones releasing it and not Mm -hmm. Crunchyroll and Prime. Mm -hmm. So... If anything, I could see them alternating. I like I could see Netflix releasing the second season for the live action because I know it got a did it did it officially get announced or they just said it's in production. Um, yeah, they got renewed. I think they got renewed for like season two and season and three, three. Correct. Or yeah. I could be thinking about Avatar. So since we ain't got no date for this reboot for the animation, I could see season two coming out of the live action. Bing bang boom! It probably was in six months to a year. We get the the One Piece anime, and then season three of the live action come out. They could run in tandem because they're tell the live action tells a different story. You know what I'm saying from what the anime tells. Like it's not fully one for one. It's not even like one for a, a half. They hit some of the big points and then they do what they want in in the middle. So the anime, if it's going to stay true to the manga, mm-hmm. more true than the regular series because the regular series had so much freaking fluff in between. Mm-hmm. I think that's worth it. I think the value proposition is there. And both parties are going to enjoy it. Because now the live action watchers are going to be like, so what was in the anime? Because I ain't watching a thousand episodes or something. They're going to watch this. Yeah. Or if there's anybody who prefers animated content. Like, I know the live action went up. But if you want to, if you still want that anime feel, but you also don't want to watch a thousand episodes, here is the One Piece. Exactly. And the thing about it, it's interesting because I think the One Piece manga, I think they did say it could end um, there in the final saga. But each One Piece saga has like three to five arcs, mm-hmm. if you if you can keep up with that. I think the last saga started off with the Island of Vegapunk, and now they're finna go into Elbath's arc. So if they're going, if they got one or two more arcs left, One Piece could end within like the next three years. Mm-hmm. And if they're doing this anime reboot and they do a seasonal release, 25 episodes, two cores in one, they got something for like the next seven plus years. And it's going to it's going to still hit like a 500 episode count for sure. But. They can make this work. Yeah. I'd be. I'd be interested to see. Like what the condensing. um encapsulates are people going to be vibing with Mm -hmm. it because you know we have new animation um and all that good stuff so the only complaints that i've seen so far is like the lightning the lightning of the characters and some of the designs but (sighs) Mm, i hate to do this i hate to do this but i am black so I, I'm the only one who can do this. Uh, I'm I'm black and I'm the only one who can do this without y'all calling me racist. What color is Usopp on this cover of this volume five manga? I can't see that. He the same. Hold on. He 
Usopp just as pale as Luffy and Nami. He has some shading because of the shadowing to show the separation from his palms to his fingers. Usopp being bright. Toy, when they animated it, yes, they made Usopp brown. But I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. This is a battle where y'all don't have much leverage. Usopp been pale. Usopp been pale. They said they want what they saw in the anime. I'm sorry. We don't this want. Is the, we don't want what we saw in that book. We don't care what we saw in the, that book. I I feel it. I feel it. And I and y'all know I'm gonna be the one to piss people off of my own skin tone and other skin tones. Usopp been pale, y'all. Usopp been pale. Robin <laughs> too. Robin too. Robin too. I'm sorry, y'all. This is if we're gonna stay true to the manga, true to the source material, take out the fluff. Y'all can look at Usopp. He pale. White bone. Not red bone. Not chocolate. Please. Not yellow bone. He we're white bone. The, we're losing the plot. <laughs> no, that's the plot. That's the plot. But um, uh, I don't know. I might check out the One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> she said, because I was not about to binge watch a thousand episodes. No. 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 But I... I feel you though. Know, like this, this I'll watch it with you. I'll watch it with you so we can drop mob reviews because I love to drop mob review for East Blue and all that. When I was binge watching, I was like, I would like to drop reviews for this. I would love to do that. So we just gotta wait. At this point, we just gotta wait for a release date. I what but, you think? When you think it might release? Twenty twenty five. Yeah, because right now Netflix Netflix has a lot for twenty twenty four. I probably. Maybe 2025 going into 2026. I'm going to say 2026. So like a winter so like a winter Christmas release? Yeah, I'm going to say 2026 to be safe though because 2024 Netflix is stacked. We already talked about this. Netflix is taking it 2024. I have no idea what they have up their sleeve for 2025. It could be the One Piece, which is why they're, you know, showing a little bit more for it. I'm saying 2026 to be safe, but it could be 2025. If they, I don't know if they're going to do well, their little I take, season, seasonal I take that splits, back. of course. I take that mm-hmm. back. It's probably going to be 2026. I feel like 2025 is going to go to One Piece live action season two, Avatar live action uh, season two, and um, anything that came out like last year, earlier this year, I think is going to take it for 2025. I could see that. I could see that. And depending on how fast which studio animates it, I want to know how far they're going. Because if their goal is to reanimate everything, are y'all like up to the time skip? Are y'all doing Marine Ford? Are y'all going to, is y'all going to catch up with the entire anime and eventually replace the overall anime within like eight years or so? Because that's still going to be a lot to adapt. I want to mm-hmm. see what they're trying to do. Because at the end of the day, anime takes a while. Like as even these big studios, when it comes to these animes, the quickest they can do is one season a year. I. That's a good question on what they plan on doing with the OG series in comparison to the One Piece that's coming out. Because look up how many episodes of One Piece there are right now for me, if you can. And it's like a thousand some. I think like, is it a thousand? Is it a thousand one hundred? Is it like a thousand sixty? Like, if they condense this even by half, season 20. That's not it. We are currently at 1,115 episodes of One Piece. One Piece could easily hit the way it's going. I could eat, and I don't know when the last arc is coming out. One Piece could easily hit like 1,400 episodes. If they condense it, if they are able to condense everything into half, divided by two, that is still like 500 currently to 700, what I'm predicting, episodes. That's a lot. That That's going to take years to if, release. If we're talking about cutting cutting down that episode count in half, yeah. I, Let's just do the 500. 25 episodes a year? That's 20 years. <laughs> that is 20 years, bro. That's fair. I do wonder how far they're going to go with this. Is, this. is this a long-term project for Netflix that 
we're keeping One Piece fans engaged on two different mediums for people who started with the OG series and people who are starting with the One Piece, people who's been watching the live action. And now, you know, you have two different options to explore it in animated form. Like, and, and if they get with studio to commit to it, at the end of the day, the manga material has been out. They ain't got to worry about catching up and nothing mm-hmm. like that, like the current anime. Even if they just make it ongoing and they don't necessarily stop. 500 episodes, 52 weeks in a year. They skip some weeks. That's 50 episodes a year. That's still 10 years. That's going to be a lot. Like, One Piece fans are going to be fed. Like, the newer fans, if they commit to do it, are going to be fed. But that is still a lot. That's a long commitment. Yeah. I want, I do wonder what the long-term plan for this is. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's weird. It's The only thing weird about this is that we're doing a reboot while the OG series is still going on. It's not one of those situations. It's not like Sailor Moon, where Sailor Moon ended in like 1995. And and then Sailor Moon Crystal came out in like 20... I don't want to be wrong. Was it 2013? It might have been. But like years after... The point is I'm saying that the reboot came like years after the OG series ended. That's not one of those type of situations. So... And uh, the closest thing to it is probably Full Metal Alchemist, but to my, because they did Full Metal Alchemist, which didn't stay true to the manga. Then they did Brotherhood, which did stay true to the manga. I can't remember if Brotherhood came out at a point where the manga was complete or not, but it did come out within like a year or two after the original series ended. So it's still very recent on everybody's minds, Mm -hmm. but the East Blue Saga aired in like the early 2000s, like 2000 two three one piece fans correct me because i wasn't watching it back then so it's been years what you're finna see it's been probably over 20 years since people first saw it that's fair that's fair i guess my only thing coming out of this is what's the long-term plan as far as the hot take i think i definitely think this is going to convince people to start watching one piece if your hesitancy was the pacing in the episode count now my question after this conversation is what is the long term goal of the one piece? Right. Cuz people still there are some people who think Naruto and Fairy Tail and Bleach are too long. And they're like what 300 to 5 400 500 episodes each. Fairy Tail is a good 300 episodes. Yeah. People think that's too long. I'm not I'm not saying it's not it's just I mean Naruto it. is longer than that. Naruto is longer than Fairy Tail this is just me going into like the black anime it's not beef it's like just some funny stuff taylor from oh my senpai she messed with duke dennis from um a and p and was like you need to watch naruto it's like man that stuff too long i'm like naruto's too long man i've rewatched that about two three times already what you talking about <laughs> just skip the filler I uh, you got you got to get in there you just got to get in there like Lock three in. like 300 like 300 400 episodes to me right now it's not a lot because i've already done it but i feel like a thousand is just pushing the envelope like that that is a feat that i never want to achieve you saw me what was it six months eight months and i'm i'm skipping out on watching other series i only nah. stopped for like one or two video games like i was locked in and that was a lot that's all right i will wait for the one piece the one piece <laughs> the one piece and that's so funny what are you watching i'm watching one are you watching one piece no i'm watching the one piece the one piece the one piece <laughs> <laughs> the last thing i want to get into though still staying in the anime area i just need to rant for a couple minutes because this morning i saw an announcement that they are releasing part 1 and part 2 of the final season of attack on titan in theaters and if you've been following us from the time of conception of the blurred mop podcast we said two years ago that they should have put that shit in theaters and they waited and they waited until the season was over and several months after that and be like oh okay let's put it in theaters homelander must work with the company that's behind this because they are milking this that is a whole lot of milking. That is crazy. That's crazy work because I remember this convers. I remember the conversation we had because they released part one 
at the same time, Demon Slayer pulled that bullshit for season three and put it in theaters. And I specifically said they should have switched. That Attack on Titan should have been in theaters and Demon Slayer should have just released on Crunchyroll as normal. Yep. That's crazy. They are milking it. They are milking it. But I have one question. Are y'all putting it in IMAX? Is it going to be like 4D? So you going to watch it? So you going to watch it? Yo, if I can watch it. I just feel like I don't want to miss out on this experience. It's Ima- if, if, if it's going if look, imagine it though. Imagine the first two parts of Attack on Titan and theaters, the wall shaking. They got that surround sound going on with the music. And if they're doing part one and part two, Ron, part two, it w- wasn't part two when they jumped out that plane at the end. Come, come on. You the reason they think they can get away with this. They've already You're the reason. They, they already got away with it. They already got away with it. You got it. It wasn't <laughs> look, it wasn't it wasn't me coming on the podcast saying, Hey, if they put this in theaters, I'ma go see it. And then they turn around and be like, Oh, that's what Foop said. Let's put this in theaters. They're already they already got away with it. The project got approved. You know, you know, you wanna know who's actually allowing them to get away with this. It's not me. It's you foldable. You foldable. You foldable and everybody who went out to support Demon Slayer in theaters despite the bullshit from 2022, that's where they got that from. That's why they feel like they can do this. I'm not going to lie. Depending on when it comes out, and I'm a little bored. When did they give it? Did they drop a date? Did they drop a date for it? I don't think I saw no date. I don't think I saw a date. If if they say they actually edited, don't pull no you foldable mess where y'all just threw that in with the intros and outros. If they, hey yo, they, they said November eighth. Th- it said it's coming out November eighth. This one hundred and forty five minute film will be a theatrical version. Let's keyword keyword theatrical improved, version with improved cuts. Improve. Look. They're giving us way more in that one sentence than that Demon Slayer shit ever did. I ain't gonna lie. If I, I piece of me wish it came out like in the Christmas time. So then once you're in town, I'll watch with you. And then I have an excuse like I'm bonding with my best friend. I'm I'm probably I'm gonna be bored during. Hey, am I going home at Thanksgiving? I might I might I'm, I might watch. It. I ain't gonna cap. I might watch it. <laughs> I might watch. I, I don't want to. Just tell, the, the, just just let me know. What like is it IMAX? Is it regular theaters? Is it gonna be four D X? Do I get to hear the I'm rumbling not, in my seat? Like, let me know. To the listeners, the business person in me and the and the and the anime fan that don't like BS wants to say, don't watch this. It's saying, don't watch. Yo, this, this saying, gonna this is gonna this. be sick. Don't listen to him. This is gonna be sick. <laughs> this is gonna be sickening. This We're gonna be disgusting. gags. <laughs> <laughs> this is disgusting. Uh, am I? Am I ever going to get my Magi continuation? Am I ever? Out of all the stuff y'all, am I ever going to get a Tokyo Ghoul reboot? Oh no. my god! Get- like, are we getting? Are, like, are are we getting promotional posters? Like popcorn buckets? Like cups? Like, let me. <laughs> am I? Am I finna get on Anime Ape or Asako and buy some Attack on Titan merch and let, wear it to the movie theater? Let me know, cause like. I'm it like under the surface of my excitement. I am pissed because you guys could have bended this like that whole like this like should have been the th- plan. That they should have been the plan. Instead. This should have been what inspired Demon Slayer to make their three movie finale. This right here that would have been perfect for you guys to set the bar on how to make a theatrical release to a finale of an anime series. You y'all could have set the bar, and with that. I'm pissed. However, however, that's going to be sick. That's going to be sick in theaters. That's going to be sick. 145 minutes. If I Damn, time so that's two, it. That's if two I hours time it, and what? That's, two hours and 25 minutes. That's going to be sick. That's a Marvel film. I'm sneaking in so many snacks. That's <laughs> that's going to be sick. And if and, and if they're cutting it, if they're cutting out like intros and outros, and they're making seamless transitions from when 
one of those hour-long specials ended into the next piece. Ryan, that's going to be sick. That's, I'm finna wear a big. I'm finna wear a big hoodie. I'm sneaking my snacks in. That's going. That's I'm, going. I'm a, that's going to be sick. And if we time it right, we can rewatch Attack on Titan up to that point, and just go watching in theaters. This is sick. This would be perfect for anybody who's doing an Attack on Titan rewatch. You were you're not wrong about that. This would be perfect for an Attack it, on Titan. It'll be re-watch. perfect. I just wish they did it earlier. That is the only beef that I have with this decision. This is the that is the only beef I have with this decision that you guys could have did this earlier. And you guys could have set the bar for Demon Slayer and how they would release these final three movies in theaters. I'm, no, but I'm mad. I'm I'm agreeing with you because I'm mad because this should have happened first. It's not even earlier. This should have happened first. If y'all were going to do this, that's what y'all should have done. This honestly, Demon Slayer kind of did set the tone. This is Mugen Train. Mugen Train came out and then the series. That's fair. Started. That's fair. Yeah. That's y'all. Fair. If y'all should, if y'all was going to do something like this, fire, fire. If it came first, because we did say. This should be in a movie. That that should have been in theaters. Like I would have been sad because that first that first um special, I would have been sat in the theaters watching that really? instead of spending my money on watching two sets of intros and outros for Demon Slayer. Because part one for Attack on Titan, like that's including the scene where they was going against a people and Hunji ended up burning up, like when the rumbling first started. Wait, oh, I'm yeah. telling you, when they got in that plane, if they're doing part one and part two, part two is when they finally got in that plane. And that whole sequence when everybody jumped out and Reiner and Annie had transformed, where well, Annie wasn't there yet, but Reiner had transformed, like. I actually might get up and start clapping in the theaters like this is my first time seeing this shit. And if they started off with like the proper three minute, remember what happened, three to five minute intro, and then we jump into this, it. I'm a watch. I'm. Ugh, ugh, I'm a watch it. I, I know. Oh, I'm a I watch know. It. You I'm hate to love it. it. You hate to love it. You hate to love it. You hate to love it because I hate it because. This should have this should have been the plan all along. I definitely agree with you, Ryan. This should have been the plan all just... along. But however, this is going to be sick. This just... is going and this is going to be two hours and twenty five minutes of non stop attack on Titan. Animated get... animated my Mappa Mappa animation, and the score for Attack on Titan is Chef's Kiss. Come on. I just want to hear rumbling with like XD speakers, like yo. If, but no, if but the, no, no, no. Soul Eater could have gotten their reboot for their ruined ending. Tokyo Ghoul, especially Re, could have got its reboot. Magi could get a season three. The anime fan in me is just, Berserk has yet to get properly animated. Yet we're getting One Piece reboots and Attack on Titan re releases. Yes, I'm going to watch it, but like there's. There's so much that could be done. I understand. It. You hate to love it. You hate to love it. They have yet to cancel those Naruto episode reboots. I think they're still coming. I see no point in it, but guess what? If they are on Crunchyroll, I'm going to watch them. I'm just... I hate this. I hate... I want to vote with my wallet, but then I'm missing out. I want to vote with my wallet, but then I'm missing out. Uh, man, listen... They trying to keep. They trying to keep the people. They trying to keep the people involved. As long as people keep talking about Attack on Titan, buying merch, and like you said, like you said offline, until they come up with a replacement, and it's got to be a good one. Until they come up with a replacement for Attack on Titan, it's this. And here's the funny thing: I don't like Demon Slayer is definitely going to release these movies. It's already been announced. My Hero Academia, I don't feel like it has as much clout for like the regular series to get movies. Well, it could, but well, no, nah, they ain't doing that. For the they film. release regular side movies into the movies. Yeah. Like JJK is is, is JJK they, Zero it, was nice. Now now if Jujutsu Kaisen wanted to come back with another movie, they have the credits to be like, okay, yeah. let's make this another movie. They have the credits. 
they could get away with like, hey, this is canon and we felt like it could fit. They could get away with that. Is this going to be the new trend, though? That's a hot take. Is this going to be the new trend for anime? I... When an anime does big enough numbers, we're going to put the canon material in theaters. I think Demon Slayer did it first. I think Mugen Trail is the first time we've mm-hmm. ever seen that. And now it seems like it's a viable route to follow for money. I would say it can be the trend. I think the qualifications on whether or not you should finish your anime in theatrical form is that if the ending is like a nonstop type situation like how how we talked about demon slayer infinity castle like if this is a situation that if you were to split this up into episodes it loses that that factor that grab factor then let's go ahead and stretch this out to an hour hour 30 project and let's throw that in the theaters i i wouldn't say let's i wouldn't say do it for shits and giggles because then you're gonna piss me off yeah Cause it, it's making me think like like let's it's not necessarily new generation anime like the mangas have been out but like let's talk about the mangas that just got their adaptations and they took the world over by storm like are we going to see a solo leveling movie in like three four years are we going to see a hell's paradise movie because hell paradise manga is only like 12 volumes last i checked it's not mm. big well i know chainsaw man gonna... chainsaw man is supposed to be getting a movie they are and i think it's for the next arc i think it's because like part i heard that the part two section of the story might be ending soon Mm -hmm. but the next arc that's in part one yeah that should begin a movie so is this just going to be the trend like when there's some canon material if an arc is only like at most four to six episodes worth of content 20 minutes an episode without intros and outros are we going to get movies for that if it's popular enough is that is that going to be the new anime trend it could be and i don't think i would be mad at it given that Like, we've had these discussions before, given that anime is becoming more mainstream, that we see successes like Mugen Train and JJK Zero, that we know that these anime movies can bring in money, then definitely. JJK Zero was what made me a JJK fan. Remember, I was hating on season one. I was like, this is nothing unique. And Zero was the one that made me go, okay, I rock with it. Yeah, Zero was nice. So Mugen Train is what hooked me to Demon Slayer. Exactly. So, like... Hmm. I think I think we're we're gonna start seeing more of this for certain series. Like you said, certain series are going to put movies out to, you know, grab more audience attention, to move further along in the story faster than what they could have did if they had to go out with a full episode or like episode. They getting all season. that money which comes back into the money for the production of the actual series. Exactly. So all of that comes I back just, to them. I, my qualification is that it has to be worth going to see. You just can't put yeah. something together for shits and giggles and say it's going to be a movie. Like, it has to be something that you guys know is going to hit. Like, Mugen Train did it. Nasty work. Beautiful work. Nicely done. JJK Zero. Nasty work. Beautifully done. Attack on Titan. I this this right here is going to be nasty work, sickening. But I wish they would have did it when everything was coming out the first time. And I feel like Mugen Train did it perfectly because even after the movie came out, it was canon. When they dropped the canon, the episodic canon version. Remember how they added that one little scene of Rengoku helping that little girl and her mom from the restaurant with a little small demon, mm-hmm. still making the ser- the episodes that you watch on Crunchyroll valuable i enjoyed that i feel like it was a great experience and how they handled the end i feel like they didn't have to do the series i feel like they could have dropped just a movie but i wasn't mad because of what they added that needs to be the blueprint that jjk Z- jjk zero was like a little prequel scene that did happen in the manga mm-hmm. which was canon i liked how that worked for an alternative route of what you can animate those are the standards attack on titan might be another standard as well depending on how they do this yeah I I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad at it at all if these if they if these anime franchises start putting pieces of their uh canon into theatrical releases. Wouldn't be mad at it. 
Man, they gonna drop a Naruto versus Pain Imag- reboot. Imagine movie. <laughs> they finna drop a Naruto v Pain movie, bro. <laughs> hey, if they got updated graphics and instead of that, like that, uh, like when they actually did get to the fight and the animation drastically changed, like if they're able to like change the way that that went down. People be arguing about this on Twitter, and I don't comment on it because I felt this way literally when I watched it the first time as it was releasing episodically. I was like, the animation dropped. Yeah, in that Nart in that Naruto v Pain arc. I don't care what y'all saying. Like they had the motion there, but the quality. Like I don't know why people forget about Naruto v Orochimaru. That was that's the quality of animation for a Naruto fight that I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Naruto v Pain was poorly animated in my opinion. It got built up, and then it just felt, like, rushed. And I was like, okay, so we not actually going to be able to see what's going on? Just, like, little... Okay. Yeah. Now, now with my statement, I, I don't mean, like, let's go pull out the best fights from past animes. We don't need that. We don't need that. Going forward, like, if if we get to a point in Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest, and it was, like, boom, Fairy Tale movie... Like count me in. If Kaiju number eight gets to a point, it's like, hey, we gotta make Kaiju's this. Kaiju's one of those new gens that. If could we do gotta, it. if we gotta make this a movie, <laughs> make it a movie. I would. I'm curious to see on how this Chainsaw Man movie is gonna go along. You were talking about Hell's Paradise. I would love to see like if they were thinking about making a movie for Hell's Paradise. Where would that go? Like. It- if when Black Clover anime comes back, because they did that movie. I can't remember if that Black Clover movie was in theaters or not. I think it wasn't. But if Black Clover comes back, it was one of those shown the date that was like with the My Hero Time and Day, mm-hmm. Attack on Titans, Generation kind of sort of. If if it gets enough acclaim, I could see them making a movie in theaters. I'd be, I'd be curious to see. I'd be curious to see. Mm. Mm. But I mean, uh, it feels good to be an anime fan. I'm not going to lie. I, hey, I agree. I agree. However you feel about it. You hate to love it. But um, that's all I had. That'll, um, those are all of our topics for episode 48. So we can go ahead and shut this down. So once again, Ron, thank you for joining me on another episode of the Blur Mob Podcast. Shout out to everybody who's watching and listening, whether this is your first time or 50th time checking us out. It is always appreciated. Make sure you check out our social media platforms for more Blur Mob updates, mob reviews, and more. You can find us on Instagram at the Blur Mob Pod. You can find us on Twitter at the Blur Mob. And you can find us on TikTok and Facebook at the Blur Mob Podcast. Make sure you check out those links in the description to see ways to uh, donate to the mob. Uh, We have our Kofi link, which is just a straight donation comes to us, or you can donate uh, using our Entertainment Earth affiliate link by you guys selves, by yourselves, some Funkos, some statues, anything your heart desires and part of your purchase comes to us. And those donations go towards equipment, software, and everything that we use to bring you guys these lovely episodes. And with that all being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. And we wasn't getting that. We got your own political views. Nobody, I didn't ask for that. As an but enemy. does, but does AI solve that though? Because you you stated in your argument that AI can be built with biases inside of it.